This presentation will have two parts, part in English and part in Russian. Questions will be in Russian. <laughs> the whole uh, presentation will be in English. Okay, so welcome. I'm happy to see uh, you survived till now. It's quite late. And I'm happy to be surviving as well. I came directly from the airport. I just changed myself and I'm here. So about myself, my name is Victoria Kupets and I'm playing several roles. But today what is relevant about myself is that I'm representing IIBA, International Institute of Business Analysis. I'm European Regional Director. That means Russia is kind of, of in my focus as well. And uh, because my presentation is about playing, obviously, I would like to highlight that I'm also kind of enjoying playing with Lego. And uh, everything which I will share with you is what I have as lessons learned from uh, trainings, workshops I facilitated. So you will see real pictures from real workshops here as well. Okay, so um, this will be in three parts show, let's say. First, we will discuss why playing, like what's so silly, why playing? why that will be of benefit. Then we will discuss about what we need to consider and then how to play. Okay? So why playing? Very quick question. How many of you really enjoy and consider that your job is fun? Wow, you're so lucky. What are you doing here? <laughs> you should be here <laughs> or a job. You should get your job enjoying your job. Okay, usually people would say we are here or here and only like a few lucky people will be here. I'm kind of unique situation <laughs> that you are happy, so I'm happy for you as well. Okay, so um, what about playing games? We love playing games, various kinds of games, more challenging when there is uh, a strategy thinking. Yeah, we need a partner for that. So we love the challenge actually, it's not so much fun. Playing chess, who loves playing chess for fun? No, but for challenge, for thinking? Yes, yeah, so this is kind of a, also a, play, a game, but it's for thinking part. This one is less thinking, but more social part. Do you remember in, uh, uh, before in so, uh, when it's like Soviet Union, people would sit in front of their apartments, like socializing and playing? So did they really care about the game? Not so much, they cared about interactions. So this is a different uh, uh, goal. This one is uh, self-playing by yourself. Yeah, like you, for those who are selfish and hate people, they can still play. <laughs> and this is also a brain thing. You need to, to think, you need to memorize, you need to know the algorithm. And of course, this is one that like, every child knows already, it, yeah? And that's creativity. It's not for fun because you become frustrated when you try to build something and it doesn't happen easily. Yeah, so this is to stimulate creativity. You want to create. Sometimes we even, uh, uh, after we finish something, we kind of like forget about it. We say, yay, checked. Next one, next set. Yeah, kids are the same. They, they want a new set, they play and then forget about it. So the whole idea of play or uh, creating. And of course you can create with anything else. Okay, so uh, games. Why do we enjoy games? Because they are, people oriented, we are human beings, we, uh, we're social beings, we love being with people. Um, also we love when there is a structure and a goal, because when you go to a game and you don't understand like what's the rule in that game, you become frustrated. It's kind of like, I don't know, I don't know. Have you ever downloaded a mobile app which is not self-explaining and you're kind of, I don't know what should I do here. I'm not enjoying this. Yeah, so you delete it. Yeah, so we need structure, we need goal. Uh, goals and also we love when it simulates real world for kids they don't have that issue they can imagine a world for us we are not so in inventive anymore so we need something similar to relate to and of course unpredictability again if you would play a game on your mobile phone which is predictable and all the time if you do a you receive b would you play it now, that would be boring. That's why that one, uh, zero X, or next, like tic tac toy, when you know the algorithm, it's kind of boring already, yeah? And the last but not least is, every time you play it, if you change the input, the output is different. That's again exciting, so the structure is the same, the goal is the same, but the result is unpredictable. So why is this important for us, for adults? Because we are, our brain loves excitement. We love new things. That's why all the time when a new iPhone comes, we want the new iPhone. 
or the new feature. We love excitement. And this book is written by a lady. She had an issue in her life and she was struggling. And to, in order to survive, she created a game. When she would make herself do things, and uh, she would reward herself, like in a game. Yay, points, level up. Yay, level up. And this is how she survived from depression, from for struggles. And similarly, we can do in business. Okay, so, so far that was personal thing, but we can do in business. We can apply this thinking when you can motivate people to do things Yes, like in games, but in a real business situation. So when we use games in business, we need to take care that there is a purpose. Adults can, uh, hate playing if there is no purpose. They are not playing just for the sake of playing. They want purpose. Yes. Also, there should be rules. And uh, the, the, the whole aim is to unleash your creativity to think outside of the box. Feedback is very important because if you do something and nobody tells you it's a good result or bad result, you don't know. You don't know what do I need to improve. And that's why games are very nice because you see the feedback. Yeah, and you want next time to do it better with a better results. And voluntary particip participation. So if in a business situation you have people who hate creativity, hate other people, don't make them play with other people. <laughs> yeah, they will hate it. I had one. I just came from Vienna. Actually, I had workshops from Monday till now. And my last workshop is tomorrow. Yeah, so the whole week. And yes, uh, the day before yesterday, I had a facilitated workshop when I gave a, a, a game for adults to play. But that was a serious game. So you will see, not a game, childish game. But one person saw it too trivial. It was not serious enough for him. And he was like, why should I play it? I don't want to play it. And he was so like behaving in a way which everybody was like, what's happening with you? Yeah, like you don't want to play, go ahead, go do something else. Yeah, so these people, they will not be willing to participate. So you need to know whom to invite. So let's go back to business analysis or any kind of analysis, system analysis, uh, economics engineering, anything which involves analysis and people. Or let's say even more than that, people interacting with a goal, not just interacting. So what we can do with games and business analysis, we can replace boring meetings. When was the, who had the boring meeting in the last month? Okay, so that means you're enjoying boring meeting because you said you have, you have fun at your workplace. <laughs> yeah, so you have fun in boring meetings. That's cool. So we can replace them to make something more enjoyable, some unpredictability, some excitement, and I will show you tools how to do so. Of course, you need structure. People need to know what will happen while they are doing it and what are the roles and everything. Yeah, so facilitator is needed. Um, <laughs> In a workshop, again, two, uh, two days ago, I said, let's practice agile in a funny way. I give you on the task, and you are a self-organized team. Let's practice it. Because agile says you need to be power to people. I'm giving you power. Just do whatever needs to be done to deliver the results. So I gave the purpose. I gave the case study they needed to work. And I said, power to you guys. And I did not facilitate anything. This was such a chaos. Nobody was known like what to do. No leader appeared to take care of the facilitation. And as a result, nothing was created which would be of value. I'm saying of value. Of course, the results were some created, but not of value. So facilitator need. So their lessons learned was we need guidance. Even like when we have power to people, we need guidance. Yeah, so we need a goal, clear goal, and why we're doing it. And last is anything which will help to stimulate creativity. It can be colorful markers, it can be posted, it can be even stress relievers. Yeah, you play anything, anything. Just like colorful chairs, some post-its which will be funny. Make some like bring life to your meetings. That's already improving your quality. But then I will give you more on what to do exactly. Okay, so what to consider when we want to play. First of all, I want you and everybody else to use your brain fully. What does it mean 
we have two sides. We have a more logical side of us and more creative side of us. And they coexist. Yeah, so that means everybody can do both. So that means that we need to choose with our brain when we plan a meeting what part of the brain we want to use in that particular meeting. Do we want to be more like linear thinking? This kind of waterfall approach, yeah? Or more holistical? Do we want to identify details or we want a big picture? Do we want to go more analytical or creative? And based on your purpose, you will select those techniques which apply. And there are so many techniques that I have no time to, pre to, to present all of them today. Okay? So there's so much you can... I will give you some references book. I will give you a book so you can uh, uh, check there later. Okay, another thing we need to bring awareness. What does it mean? Um, this is kind of cliche. I think you saw it at least once in your life. Anyone? So similar thing? Yeah, that means that people have a very limited thing they're conscious about. What does it mean for us? That some things people are not aware that they want or expect. Yeah? How many of you work in projects? How many of you work as an uh, analyst of any kind in a project? Okay, uh, have you ever happened that you deliver 100% of what was asked and people are still unhappy? Aha, uh -huh, okay, so you are working with your projects, I can understand that. That means they consciously want something, they know it, and they uh, ask about it, yeah? And that makes us, uh, for decision making or for thinking logically, but that's only 10%. So your 100% is their 10%, okay? But there is more. These are things which people um, expect, but you need to dig. They will not tell you. It's kind of by default. It's kind of an expectation that the car will have four wheels. Nobody needed to tell you that the car should have four wheels, but you need to dig for that information. And this is like dark really dark. They're even not aware of what's there. Hidden, locked, like not existing. <laughs> okay? What does it mean for us as analysts? That there is information, there are requirements which are so hidden, not not existing, but so hidden that people are not aware of them. Okay? And let's go with creative, I will show it in a more creative way. And this is my drawing. It's ugly, but it's mine. I'm, ha I'm happy for it. Um, which I explained kind of model. And kind of model says like that, that there are things, yeah, this is official, <laughs> official representation of it. There are some things which people expect and you deliver. And they're happy. Yeah, so I ask you 100 of things, you give me 100 of things, I'm happy. And these are called satisfiers, and these are like here, yeah? Cautiously asked. But there are many, many things which they expect, but they don't tell you. And if you don't deliver them, people will be unsatisfied or dissatisfied. Dissatisfiers. So you need to dig, to, uh, to search for them. Nobody will give them to you unless you search. And the last one are delighters. Never ask somebody what you would be delighted to receive because that will be a satisfier. Yeah? Delighted is something when you come up creatively. Okay? So it's kind of everybody ex expects to have four wheels in a car and you sell a fifth wheel, which is a re for a reserve. And they will say, oh, cool. I was not expecting it. So coming back to this one, why I want to show that something which is deep, 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 uh, you cannot use your, let, let's kind of this one. This one is obvious, satisfiers. You can ask questions. You know, there was many questions, five whys and one age question. Yeah, so you can ask your que many questions. You can use a year, that's a year, an ugly year. And you can use the month for that. You cannot do this here. You will die unless you have oxygen. <laughs> yes, you cannot use your ears and your mouth to do that. Because people, if you ask questions, they're not aware. They will not answer your question. That means you need some different elicitation techniques here, like document analysis, process uh, uh, analysis, or uh, uh, observation, apprenticing, other. That means you need to also create games where you would put people to do things and you would observe them. That's another benefit of games. And this one is here, nobody sees it, it's kind of under clouds, uh, delighted, so you need to use a brain, it's a brain, it's not an ass. 
it's a break <laughs> and um, you need to use your creativity in order to think like how can we solve this in a different way than before okay so this is kind of analysis so that means we need to design our workshops our meetings in such a way that people will not die there this is one and second one that they will be addressing all the levels what is conscious unconscious and so on but also it's very important to speak on their own language what do you mean what do i mean by that some people prefer to see things show it to me show it to me i don't like blah 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 show it to me do you know these people Yay, are you this people? <laughs> Some people, they don't want to see things like a, a kind of, no, I want to check it, I want to test it, I want to work with it. Do you know these people? And other people, they, they just tell me what you have to tell, and I don't care to touch, I don't care to see, I'm done. Just tell me what you want. That means that different people have different needs and channels of communication. So if you have a visual person with visual preference, you need to show him things. So sending an email to a visual person, like speaking to a deaf person, they need to see things. Yeah? So that's you need to show, you go and you show something. These are managers which, which love PowerPoint uh, pictures and bullet points. Okay? No stories. Here is the opposite. They don't care about your picture. I need a story. I need behind. I need details. Like, what's there inside? Zoom in. This is zoom out, this is zoom in. And these people, the last ones, they are auditory, so a phone call is okay with them. Call me, tell me what you need from me. Tell me, explain something. You don't need to come here, I don't need to see you. Like, why, why you showed up here? Yeah? <laughs> you see, different people, different needs. Again, coming back to the games, you need to design your games in such a way that all the people will be entertained and participating and giving feedback. And now let's go for the tools. Three categories, main like clusters. Note taking, facilitating meetings, and discovery. When you are in a meeting and you do making notes, minutes, uh, meeting, um, minutes of meeting, yeah, in English, how do you do it? You write, obviously. Are you doing mind maps when people speak? Mm, that would be too creative. Ooh, how can I do a mind map in a meeting? <laughs> so mind maps help people think creatively, especially if you do it visibly somehow, people can give, give feedback, you, feedback to you immediately. Yeah? Okay, this is a mind map. Another one is, okay, draw the story. You can meet two people, one will be writing the boring stuff and somebody will be drawing. And this drawing will give feedback and people will be entertained. It can be well, very fancy drawings, so it can be ugly drawings. This is me, you might not recognize me. Um, especially in the first picture I had short hair. And this is two of my bosses. <laughs> Uh, actually, this is a Canadian one. Uh, this is my um, this is Jared Gorai. He's uh, direct managing director of IBA, and this is uh, Roland Garais from Vienna, where I work in Vienna. So, and these are the doodles of presentation in a conference. So there was a presentation. Imagine like a meeting story, and somebody was doodling it while the meeting was happening. And as I said, this is a more professional one, but if you want some ugly things, these are my doodles doing the trainings I'm doing. Here I'm representing the role of uh, analyst. You can obviously see the metaphor. Yeah, but there are many, many details. So once I'm explaining, I'm drawing the next arrow, and he's speaking to him, and he's speaking back, and there's a given feedback. So it's a living story, and people usually enjoy it. Here, I described how many types of requirements are existing at IABA, PMI, and other. And this is about system and context analysis. Yeah, so people understand that the system is in the context, and the context is in the context, and so on. So people love seeing things, even if they are very, very ugly. And if you want to learn how to do things ugly initially, and then to improve, these are the books I recommend. I started with them as well. So my initial ugly was like this kind of ugly. And then it involved the different level of ugly. Yeah, so I recommend these um, books for you. Okay, next. Let's go for meeting facilitation. So this is what's making notes, kind of uh, passively. Let's go for a more active facilitating meetings. Uh, De Bono, have you heard about De Bono, Six Thinking Hats? 
Yeah, this is an example of showing the mind map to show how the Bono works. So if you have meetings where everybody's speaking, nobody's respecting <laughs> somebody has to listen. Yeah, like power of speaking and uh, kind of chaotic jumping like a crazy monkey, monkey from one topic to another. Do you have such meetings? Chaotical? Yeah, so to avoid these kind of things, you need a facilitator. And that facilitator is having blue hat imaginary. You don't need hats, really. And then uh, this is a manage. So the facilitator states that, uh, is observing, yes, what's happening, and then selecting which hat is appropriate to go next. And I will explain each hat to you. And state the rule and control uh, what's happening. So this is facilitator. The hats. Usually you will start with a white hat. You kind of symbolically put something white on the table, saying let's follow, let's use white hat. White hat means information, facts, only facts. Let's assume we have a business meeting and we want to discuss a topic. So white hat, facts, tell me facts, information, what is known, what is unknown, and so on. Neutral, no opinions. So if somebody says a fact and somebody else says, no, 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 I disagree, what's happening? Facilitator says, stop now, because the disagreement will be discussed when we discuss our feelings at the red hat. That means that here, facilitator is asking, do you have facts, 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 done, let's go next very quickly. We don't judge, we don't discuss, we don't make drama here. Drama is here. So when there is a, such a, like a, a people kind of waiting, like exploding with drama in them, then the facilitator with the blue hat may decide to go for the red hat. That means feelings. And here, no reasons are given. It's emotion. If you want to cry, you are allowed to cry. So it's hunches, intuition, emotion. You need, don't need to explain. And after you finish with your story, <laughs> then the facilitator decides. Either we go to, let's say, green, when it's creativity and possibilities and ideas and different kind of perceptions. Or we go to black if you want to discuss about risks. Yeah, like what's caution, critical, judgment, and so on. And yellow, if we want to discuss like positive aspects of a feature or whatever. So it's, it's called lateral or parallel, meaning we are not like that, discussing. But we discuss one topic, finished, we don't come back to it. Parallel, stream, finished, parallel, and so on. It's also called lateral. It's the same idea. It's proven that in uh, big corporations, it's improving four times like uh, quicker and more effective business meeting. So this is one, facilitation. A uh, different one is taking something boring like a feedback, for example, and transforming it using a visual template. So you would write here like ideas, lessons learned, good or improvements, give everybody a sticker, a post-it, and without having in a boring like everybody to stay everybody goes and put stickers and then you discuss so they feel they contributed or iceberg for something like what do we know what is hidden or this is our goal this is our problem let's discuss let's put stickers it's the same aim as before so you can still discuss like in a boring uh, template uh, like a boring way previous one but now you have the visual thing and visual people will enjoy it and kinesthetic people will enjoy it because they will like, write post-its. And auditory people will do nothing, but they will still enjoy it because they will be listening. So everybody will feel in their own uh, very nice atmosphere. And this is the book. You can, uh, this book has nothing else than only templates. It's full of templates. <laughs> so if you don't know what to do in your next meeting, go ahead. I'm pretty sure it's um, very, very cheap, or even uh, for those who have Kindle Unlimited, it's for free. So you just go and grab a, a, a one, and you can print it. So if you don't feel confident that you can draw, print it, and you will have it. And if you use Post-its, it's reusable. Yeah? Just tell people, don't touch it, don't write on it. Okay, and this is my ugly thing. So this is uh, actually from last week, real workshop, when I told them, 
uh, we need to discuss the real business need here, system context and stakeholder map, and they used post-its and liked a lot. And if I would say to them, just draw it without post-its, they will have fear like, oh, but what if I don't like, what if I want to move it, what if it's ugly? If it's a post-it, they don't care because they can take it out and, and throw it away. Yeah, and these are our other examples. So these are real examples from real projects, which I facilitated and I asked people, instead of doing a boring stakeholder analysis, just to make, these are t-shirts. I said, oh, let's use t-shirts for our stakeholders. Yeah, and the color of t-shirt makes sense because these are like different colors, different types of stakeholders. And we discussed about are they happy with our project or less happy? Again, so I just, I went to a shop and I saw these other things and I said, oh, interesting, I can use it, yeah? Okay, if you uh, want more complex things, then you can go for something hands-on, real, like 3D. We are level up, yeah, level up to 3D, and you can do stakeholder analysis like that. Yeah, it's still nice, it still makes sense because everything here represents something. And if you want even more level up, we go for Lego. And it's called serious play because it's designed for adults, not for kids. My kids hate me because I have more Lego bricks than they do. I have all of them. Actually, I have a like, big suitcase like Lego bricks. Yeah? So do you want, are you curious to see the real results and real project using Lego? Anyone wants to see? Okay, this is it. This is a small thing. This is our company. This is a training organization. So these are our trainers. Uh, these are, this is a witch and this is a shark. You can guess our attitude toward them. Uh, this is actually a monkey represent our creativity. And this is a cow, which means cash cow, our income. And this is a gold. Yeah, so it's our income. But this is a very small thing. Now let's go big. And this is the end result. We analyzed relationship between our company and our stakeholders, clients, competition, uh, other educational providers, uh, which we corporate partners, everybody is here. And it was a four hour workshop when we did first analysis for Aziz. And then we saw that some things are crazy there, which need to be improved. And we did for it to be. And as a result, we had very tangible results about the strategy, how to deal with these guys. Yeah, so we were playing for hours, but that was real. And also, you see, this is a very flexible link. So it makes sense, it's flexible, but complicated, you see? But this one is not flexible at all. So it's easy to break. It's kind of don't touch it approach. And this one is chained. Kind of, you have nothing, you can do nothing. You see, this was a long, long discussion, but the results were like super duper. <clears throat> and last one, innovation discovery. This is when you want newness. Yeah, here you can discover all stuff. Here when you want something new. And for this one, I recommend Innovation Games. This is a book, and this is a website. You just go innovation.com, uh, innovationgames.com, and they have everything from the book in the website. So you don't need to buy the book. And I will show you only a few of them, because the book is pretty big. So I will show a few of them, which I find very, very useful, and I also applied them personally. So what is uh, happening here? We're playing, obviously. But here we can play with customers or internal stakeholders, online or in person. They have online version. And uh, it can be across uh, uh, organizations. Okay. Yeah, and it can be simple game or complicated one for, for you finish one game, you go to another one. Why it's working, and these are people who are working. Why it's working, because it's a collaborative play. You learn from somebody else. And uh, it shows the behavior because people can fake it verbally. Yeah, they can tell you they love something, but when they behave, you can tell how they behave in real life. And of course, you can uncover some data which was not uh, visible or um, obvious and fully engaged in the task. Okay, feedback is very important here as well. So let's go for one. Uh, when we apply them, market research, product, man product design or management, portfolio management, requirement management, project management, anywhere. 
And of course, you can do it for innovation thinking, for brainstorming, or for workshops. This is number one, speedboat. You draw a speedboat. Uh, by the way, I'm tomorrow here in the next room doing a workshop. Hands on. You're invited. And we will be playing with this. OK? So that's why I'm rushing now, because if you're interested, you know where to find me. So uh, speedboat means you draw the ugly speed boat or any boat, you see? And then you say, uh, post it, what is stopping us from our progress? What is helping us like wind? And what's our goal? OK? And people start putting their post it there. Another one is spider web. When you draw like our tool, or our system, or our feature in other tool system features which are linked. Again, if you tell people to, do, to, to draw uh, like a context diagram, it's boring. When you say, let's draw a spider map, it's like, ooh, spider map. Uh, this is when you want to sell a product and you don't know how to market it and it's software product and say, oh, I don't know, it's software. Make it non-software, <laughs> make it physical. Like, uh, what would you write if it would be old school and it would be sold in a shop? What would you write about it? What would be your message? What would be your vision? Yeah? And then people get creative. They really need to write something there. You can, they cannot say, I don't know. Yeah? And this is a tree. And how I use it, I will show you. This is my tree. Um, I use apples and leaves and everything I have uh, at home, like butterflies and everything. <laughs> and apples represent results. So if a tree is a project, the question is, what are the products of your project? And you can draw apples of different kind of uh, uh, colors, like good apples and spoiled apples and uh, like whatever apples. Yeah. So this is the work. Um, and um, this is a bigger one. Yeah. So also, it's a real one from real project. Buying a feature is prioritization technique when you may give uh, virtual money to people and ask them to buy some features. This is uh, very helpful for prioritization because usually people say everything is important. Do you have, does this happen to you? Everything is important? But if you give them money, <laughs> and uh, half of the money, then they cannot buy everything. Then you will see really what's important for them. And you can do it like this one, Monopoly one, or using an app. Actually, it's, a, it's an app offered also by the innovative games. So I would like to summarize that there are many, many techniques which you can apply. This is a mind map of the innovation games, which can help you to boost more fun and creativity into your business meetings, any kind of meeting. There is no excuse. So if you are enjoying a boring meeting, go ahead. But if not, it's up to you what you would do. Either you will be sleeping or engaging. Thank you very much. And of course, I invite you tomorrow to the second part, more practical part of the workshop. And now let's head over to Russian. Do you want? It's up to you. <laughs> okay, I can do both. Um, first of all, thank you for the presentation. Uh, my internal visual person is full in rapture, <laughs> actually. Um, uh, the question is, uh, if there is something, adjustments or advice uh, for the uh, described, uh, described approaches for the uh, distributed team or outsourcers, how to interact with them in the plain way? In the same way with any other human being. So it's they are human beings as well, and they will love playing. You haven't f <laughs> I mean, uh, you haven't faced some problems or adjustments in I this play case. with executives. OK. Because they are human beings, they love playing. It's up to you how you see them. But this helps, if, uh, especially if you put people who are not working usually together to work together. It's team building as well. Okay. Thank and you. aligning the vision and everything. Uh, do we have a word? I will ask Irina just because she is speaking in English. Um, Speak here. Okay. It is, all these um, tools are hands on. 90% of my meetings are virtual, life size, kind okay. of not there with the people. So we, and the visuals that we have today, even they are great, will not allow us. So how can we manage this? Uh, screen? Share your screen. And move around things on your screen. And if you go and do remote control, allowing other people to move, 
that it's still interactive, it's still creativity. Yes, they will not do all of them hands-on. Those who need, they will ask requests for your screen. So it's possible to do. Yeah, other questions? Yes, please. Yes, so it works for short one. Why? Because creativity is short. You cannot have a creative four-hour meeting. Yeah. Uh, so yes, it works. You just need to, to state the, the right template and to give the right tools. So if you say post-its and everybody write a post-it, actually they, you don't need to hear all of them presenting. You just say, put a post-it, put there the post-it, thank you. And you have in like a very short time, 15 minutes, many ideas. Yeah, so it's, it is done. Actually, I prefer to do it in a shorter rather than longer. And if it's work with government, Everybody is a human being. Now you need to understand what level. If they feel as, as themselves I'm too important, it's too silly for me, maybe you would not, maybe you would avoid or you would try and see if it works. Yeah, and then you will learn. The idea is that you need to train your, your, your stakeholders. They expect you to be bored, bored, boring, 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 and then suddenly you're like, like, let's play, and they will see like, what's happening here? Resistant to change, but actually if they enjoy it, they might enjoy it second time and so on. Yes? So try. Because I work with government people who are very friendly. And it worked. And I work with unfriendly people in non governmental. They didn't work. Yeah? Other question? Yes, please. Здравствуйте. Можно на русском, конечно. Слышно, слышно. It depends. It depends on the on the objective. It depends on the objective of the game, meaning that the game. Between people. So, assuming you have to speak to people, you would need many many interviews. Put all of them together. Put a very short time time box. Shorter, better, because creativity works on pressure. Yeah, we need adrenaline. You need to be creative one hour. Yeah, that's why uh, a brainstorming should be eight minutes, 15 minutes maximum. Yeah, so yes, you put them together, you give an assignment, make it short, and then you have more results than doing several uh, different meetings. Yeah, and I would recommend to do it as a must, even if you don't care about playing as a networking, uh, as a team building activity in the beginning of any project. Even project planning. You can do a project planning using mind map all together. Last one, or do we have time? Last one. Last one. A new person, let's try. Have you asked a question? No. Okay. For project kickoff. Could you recommend a game for project kickoff? There are so many. There are so many games. The uh, um, for instance, uh, the speedboat would be good. Speedboat, when you would discuss where we need to go, and that's our goal. And then what the risks do we have? And what the wind is helping us? And you can put even people, small people, in the boat. And you can add so many things. You can put like uh, as, um, sun, uh, uh, clouds, which everything has a meaning. And lightning, everything. <laughs> yeah, rolling the boat. You can do so much in that thing, and people will be laughing and uh, uh, and enjoying. And afterwards, you will have so much co concrete results. Speedboat and the, the tree one, but you need to have be creative. You can say apples is what we need to deliver. And then you can draw some worms in the roots. Yeah, some wind, some insects. Yeah. Uh, you still need to write details. Ask them to come for a workshop to play in such a way that they will know the scope of the project and they will experience it. A Lego play can work. Lego can work. Yeah, because hands-on. Usually developers, they like hands-on. Okay, thank you very much. I will be here during like 
this party and I will be here in the morning. So if you want to experience this, I'm looking forward in the next room. Thank you very much.